try then? Are you trying to talk, torment me again? Who's trying to torment you? You're not gonna make me lose me temper, me young Corby. You are as You're not gonna get your point. I always really loved the plow and the stars. I love how OKC shows you the revolution through the eyes of these tenement characters. It's a tense time in Dublin. One of the characters says, the time is rotten ripe for revolution, which I think is uh, accurate, even though they're, it's, they're not quite talking about it yet. There's a kind of a, a tense feeling throughout. The play takes place in the tenements of Dublin in 19, six, between 1915 and 1916. All of the ordinary people who live in very impoverished conditions have a different relationship to the political events that are going on around them and those events turn out to be very momentous for Irish history because the rebellion that takes place in the play is the famous 1916 Rising which Irish people really look back to as the seminal point as the, of the birth of the nation. The four platforms they have, there's one of them just outside there, opposite the window. Oh sure, when the speaker comes to the near end here, you can see him playing, hear nearly everything he's spouting out of him. You know, it's no joke trying to make up 55 shillings a week for your keep and laundry. And then they tax you a quid for your own room if you bring home a friend for the night. If only I could buy a couple of quid for a swank your room, but everything in the garden is a lovely Wish, trip. wish till we hear what he's saying. I think like O'Casey's other works, this play is fantastic because it pulls you into the characters. Each scene, each act kind of pulls you farther and farther into the world until you're completely sunk into it. And it really brings it together in the end this, this kind of catharsis and experience that O'Casey had a really unique ability of doing. This is the huge, huge, I've never been in a festival quite like this. The Sean O'Casey uh, trilogy of plays. This is an immensely exciting uh, project and I'm incredibly proud to be a part of it and this wonderful acting company. She's after going without her kid. What are we going to do with it now? <laughs> what are we going to do with it? Bring it outside and show everybody what you're after finding. Pick it up, you Pluto. Run after her with it, will you? What do you take Pluto for? You must think Pluto's a right gum. Do you think Pluto's like yourself? Destitute of a titter of understanding. Take it up, man. Run it after her with it before she's gone too far. Come on, come on. Well, you're not going to leave the bloody thing here, are you? O'Casey is a joy to do. The characters, no matter how miserable they are, are, are full of life. They're full, their hearts are beating, their blood is rushing, and you're there and you're speaking those words to the, out, out to that audience, and there's nothing, there's nothing, nothing like it. O'Casey is not about kings and queens and, and presidents and, and secretaries of state. O'Casey is about the people. O'Casey is about everyday folks who experienced the life of what, what was going on at the time. And what a rich time to interpret and discover. I think O'Casey is a genius. I, I think this play is really magnificent. I feel like at times the play is symphonic. It's brass and explosions of sound and then there are these beautiful little quiet interludes and I think O'Casey brings every color, every possible nuance of human psychology and every possible shade of society. It's a lovely feeling to have directed The Plow and the Stars as the first production of the Irish Repertory Theatre and to direct it again at its 30th anniversary. It's been some 30 years, I tell you.